The 232nd ECS meeting was held at the Gaylord National Resort and Convention Center in October 2017. Over 2,300 scientists and engineers came together to experience symposia, talks, and posters. So you want to take cheap, clean energy, turn it into a chemical fuel, stick it in a tank, and then ship it. The ECS lecture was given by Nobel laureate and former U.S. Secretary of Energy, Stephen Chu, who talked about the role of electrochemistry in our transition to sustainable energy. And so what I see in all of this, as you noted, is electrochemistry is going to be at the heart of this. Among those honored at this meeting were Philippe Marcuse, the 2017 Olin Palladium Award winner. So that's the uh, Olin Palladium uh, Award medal. I brought a picture because it's, it's made in Palladium, so it's now in the safe of my uh, hotel room. So. Marcuse is the director of research at the National Center for Scientific Research in France and Eric Waxman, the 2017 Carl Wagner Memorial Award winner. He is the director of the Maryland Energy Innovation Institute. This equation has had a tremendous impact not only in the field of solisionics, but quite honestly, multiple things related to the Electrochemical Society. For instance, corrosion, oxide growth is determined by this. Dr. Waxman was also the chair of the 7th International Electrochemical Energy Summit. Held every fall, this year had three symposia, the Energy Water Nexus, the brain and electrochemistry, and sensors for food safety, quality, and security. We're bringing in uh, the agencies that support the research that is, that is critical for the members of the Electrochemical Society. So this is a, a unique benefit for the members of the society to find out about the opportunity to fund their research so they can make the developments to address the needs of the human population. ECS OpenCon was broadcast around the globe live from this meeting. OpenCon is a worldwide phenomena influencing the next generation of researchers by talking about open access, open education, open data, and changing the culture of how research is shared. So instead of waiting until you get to a publication to make that available and just the publication alone, opening up data, having open lab books, uh, really front-loading the openness of the entire process from the beginning. ECS OpenCon was the first satellite event held by a scholarly society. It included speakers from the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation, Dryad Digital Repository, the University of Washington, the National Institutes for Health, the Center for Open Science, and SPARC, the Scholarly Publishing and Academic Resources Coalition. I think the most important thing is just to start getting involved, to start having those conversations, to you know, start talking with you know, the chair of your department or with you know, folks that are involved in the faculty. Another landmark event at National Harbor was the ECS Data Sciences Hack Day, the Society's first foray into building an electrochemical data sciences and open source community. Uh, sorry, sorry, different kind of hacking. Uh, Hack Day is an opportunity to get people together from around ECS to build software, to learn how to program, and eventually build a community of data science in ECS. During the DOE Ride and Learn event, ECS meeting attendees had the opportunity to see one of the world's first commercial hydrogen and fuel cell cars. I became a member of ECS because it lets me connect to people beyond just the confines of my lab. Students from all over the world attend ECS meetings, some thanks to our travel grants program. Um, there's a lot of students that do electrochemistry at our school, but there's not a lot of like classes about it or um, seminars. I wanted to kind of reach out and see, you know, where are my other electrochemistry friends in the nation. I would like to highly recommend other people join ECS student member because this is valuable stuff. I don't want to do it only myself. I want to share the value with other people. The networking continued around the poster sessions. And let's not forget the exhibitors who showcase the equipment so critical to the research. ECS members are very unique in that they're very approachable. They like coming up to you and talking with you. ECS is always a, a reunion of sorts, so we get to see our really good customers that make it, a, make it a point to come back and see us. It is kind of that old family and friends feel, and you get to talk about things maybe outside of electrochemistry too. And the kind of neat thing is, is you'll see people that maybe were undergraduates or graduates and you watch their careers grow, and then they become 
professors and they introduce you to their students and you just kind of have this camaraderie. ECS meetings are where you build your network, start your collaborations, find your community, and make friendships that last a lifetime. Yeah, ECS has been my main professional society involvement through my career from, from way back. So, I, you know, I value many things, primarily the people with whom I interact. The Electrochemical Society sort of has been a way for me to bring my profile into the U.S. sort of field of research. But building this community, to me, has been something of a, of a building of a family. ECS is where I find an opportunity to do rigorous science, to talk to like-minded people about that science, people who are pursuing the science with the same rig rigor and integrity, and it's where I keep my friends. It's, it's what my job's all about, yeah. Traveling to nice places and, and uh, drinking wine with, uh, with friends. You don't have to include that. Uh,